Hello and welcome to Ask Us Your Questions. Yes, Ask Us Your Questions. Right, right there you go. A uh, little theme tune there, a little introduction. Okay, so yes, thank you so much to everyone who has sent their questions to us. We uh, did put out a little YouTube comment just to say, send us your questions. And people have responded. We've been quite overwhelmed. We have. People comment all the time on the videos underneath and we don't have the chance to reply to all of those and we would end up repeating ourselves. So we thought we would ask for you for your questions. And you have done. Some people have sent 20 questions. I've collected them into a list here. The question master. And so I'm going to start by asking the first question. Are you really brothers? Are you, are you That's a brilliant that? question. Okay. Of, yes, we are really brothers. Uh, we, are, we are both brothers and we... Um, with each other. With each other. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, we, we became brothers. Uh, I became your brother three years after you were born. You did. And it's a, I think it's a brilliant question. That's from TDO5SS Legacy. Thank you very much. And most questions then continue with, how did we learn to play? Where did we study? Lots of things about music and our education. Yeah. And so that's from Adrian Perez, Pedro Oliveira, Ben Alder, Skyhunter BB, Simon A, Follower, Alan N64, Manuela and Paula. So yeah. I began learning the piano first when I was 10 years old and uh, I wanted to learn the piano and our parents have always been so supportive of everything we do and they still are. Um, so we got a piano and I had lessons from a lady who lived around the corner who was nearly 80 years old at the yeah, time. Yeah, just around the corner. So yeah. it was very, uh, very handy, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, she only charged 50, oh, 50 pence for a piano lesson at the time. Um, she, had a, she had a lot of students, as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, and so she taught everybody locally really and at the same time uh, at the school I went to there's a church attached and they needed an organist so they asked me to play the organ that's why I started teaching myself to play the organ and play for the church services yes. and then Tom well I mean I was attending the piano lessons and I was sat there at the back and uh, I just thought well I should also have a go at playing the piano and uh, yes and you made it look so easy Jonathan <laughs> <laughs> um, so after a while of playing the organ and trying to teach myself the pedals and how to play it all I started having some organ lessons when I was about 12 years old with Audrey Robinson at the Albion Church mm -hmm. in Ashton on the line and Audrey was very old school you would definitely say she didn't mess around and didn't mince her words but she was a brilliant teacher who prepared you with all the sort of really good technique and organ playing and i still have my lesson book that i used to take to my who, organ who lessons things, anyway. and she used to write a piece down and then write fair very good average poor um so that was interesting because you always got this basic thing that you didn't get praise easily but when you did you knew you'd really earned it did you ever get a very good I did get very good. There's, oh, a, couple of, there's a couple of very good. You never there, got an excellence good. unless you learnt the piece <laughs> in one week perfectly. Oh, well, there you go. Harsh, harsh but fair. We'll say on that one. Yeah. Fantastic. So there you go. So that's really where our main places where we started to uh, to learn our, our our music, and then from there we went on to um, study at Cheatham School of Music, uh, a specialist music school, which was great and. Uh, you actually played the organ there as well. You were, yeah, before yeah. that, we'd done lots of festivals and started playing together, really. So yes. there were lots of music festivals, and you used to have a class of, say, 30 people who'd all get up and play their, their piece, and you get an adjudication. And it was a great way of just learning to play in public, in front of people, and learn to perform, and how to cope with maybe nerves and the adrenaline of performance. Because lots of people asked about first performances, and they're a great way of just learning to play. Yeah. And then, of course... As Tom said, on to Cheatham School of Music. Indeed, uh, where we carried on. Uh, I do remember my first public performance, though, and I'd learnt uh, a tarantella, and uh, I've got it nice under the fingers, and then I was waiting to be called to, to perform, and I got up to the piano stool, uh, lifted the piano stool up, and I actually sat on my fingers. <laughs> oh, do you remember that? And then I, and I actually played it so quickly, uh, and I, I won the class, and I got 100 out of a hundred and I've never got that since uh, but I've never gone up and trapped my fingers in a piano stool no so it was great since. maybe you, I should try that no you, don't try that you would so you you won lots of them and won cups and things like yeah, that yeah we do have cups yeah. and things like that and and actually every single kind of little uh, thing that you kind of achieve all helps doesn't it keep yeah. the enthusiasm going so yeah we've, we've had you know some nice things happen along the way so then 
off to the specialist music school. So I, I then, studied yeah. piano and organ at Cheatham's, uh, and that was great for experiences because you would turn up at eight o'clock in the morning for a lesson, and they'd suddenly say, "We need someone to do a piano recital this lunchtime," mm. and give you a train ticket, and you'd go somewhere and do a concert. Yeah. And that used to happen a lot. Big orchestras down at Festival Hall and the Barbican and things like that. So really great opportunities. And then I went on to the Royal Northern College of Music and did piano and organ there as well. And that was my basic training up to sort of end of university yep. level. And I was uh, on uh, on the joint course at the RNCM, Royal Island College of Music, and at the University of Manchester. So I, and then I carried on at the University of Manchester and did a master's degree and PhD. So yes, there you go. I'm gonna have a Education, quick... is that our education over there? I think so, that's enough of that for now. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna have so many questions that I've decided to have a quick fire round. Quick this fire round, let's do that. How long do you practice for? Um, uh, depends uh, what I've got coming up, but five hours a day and that's usually Pretty much it. Yeah, it, could be up, it could be up to 12, though, if we're if we doing a lot of rehearsing. I've played when I've worked for a long time, 12 hours in a day. Um, do you make mistakes? Do you make mistakes? Um, nothing ridiculous. No. No, think, no, nothing like that. I think, you know, we we really are very well prepared when we play in concerts and I things. Think it's just everything else which happens which could go wrong I is think, the issue. I think what people class as mistakes aren't always what everybody else thinks of mistakes. It's not just wrong notes. It's getting to the instrument and everything. There's so many things in a concert and I think that will come up to sort of worst performance experiences which yeah, will come up interesting in Interesting things <laughs> happen during live Things happen all the time yeah. that you can't control but mistakes aren't what people think sometimes. Um, oh, will you play for weddings? That's from Letitia Humphrey. Is that for her wedding? I don't know if it's your, for your wedding, Letitia, but I, I, I started playing at church when I was young and then I went to another church, St Cross in Clayton, which had an amazing yeah. brand new tracker mechanical instrument and I played organ in church for 20 years, so I've played for actually thousands of weddings. Um, I've retired now, but I do play for friends and uh, family and people I know, so I do play for some weddings and uh, that answers another question from Pedro about whether we play for services or just concerts. I did used to play for services and I used to play for odd cathedral services and everything so yes we've done all that yes um that takes us back to our careers so we've been to the royal island college of music you'd been to the university mm -hmm. and then we started our professional careers yes really. we did um uh, mine funnily enough my main career really was as a pianist at the time when i graduated mm. so i used to go around playing lots of piano recitals I used to do lots and lots of piano concertos, all the Rachmaninoff, Grieg, Tchaikovsky's and things with orchestras, which I absolutely love. Playing for choirs and in orchestras professionally and for lots of things like even organ for brass bands and everything as an accompanist. And so really exciting Jonathan, you sound things. like you've done it all. <laughs> it sounds very tiring. But no, no lots of experience. No, no, that's, that's the same with myself. We both had our kind of separate solo careers yeah. for quite a long time before we kind of came together playing together. So yeah, we played in lots of orchestras, playing all the orchestral keyboard parts. We've, you know, played as soloists in orchestras, concertos, it's, all sorts of things. It's all great experience yeah. which you bring together for everything you do. And then I, I, I had an organ series as organist in residence at Salford University, and then led on to being the organist, um, uh, my associate artist at Bridgewater Hall, where I have the organ series there, which brings us more or less to today, I think. But Tom's career doing his PhD led on to lots of animation and film, didn't it? Yes, uh, of course. When I was um, at the university, I did a lot of work in electroacoustic composition. And so that was like using technology to create compositions and, and, and really just work with all sound. So it was a really fantastic time to, to utilize all my kind of recording stuff and things like that. And also I started to work with visuals as well. And that's why I'm really kind of keen on my animation and things like that. So uh, around all this time, this is in the early 2000s, we began playing together doing piano and organ because we'd found some piano and organ pieces and decided to play them. And if you've never tried to play piano and organ before, it feels a bit uncomfortable at first. <laughs> it does, it? It, it feels a bit uncomfortable at first because it's you're just so far away from yeah. each other yeah. mainly. And then, so it's just getting used to that. Um, but as I say, because we've played in orchestras and things like that, we were actually quite used to kind of being it's the distance, the, yeah, the distance yeah. away from kind of a maybe you could be playing a you know a, 
a keyboard part which is with someone on the other side of the, the room with the orchestra. I know the, the guy at the front with the, the hands waving around the conductor keeps that together. But it, it's really interesting to be able to work as an ensemble. So we've always done a lot of that. Yeah, and so with Tom's film and sound background and us playing duos together... It seems to have all come together. Yeah, we started to make some YouTube videos yes, when yeah. that came along. Yeah, um, about 2007. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it, it was great. We just And with the YouTube videos, we make them because... As we have concerts, we used to just always film a piece at some concerts and put them on our film, a piano duet, yeah. two pianos. That's what we've always done. Yeah, it was always just to use all the, the technology which was, was there and we thought we would share what we were doing Because Sandra asked, out there. Because Sandra asked how we find the places to play and they find us. People invite us to go and give concerts yeah. and when we're there, we make videos. And th what brought a lot more concerts out was the lockdown where... We started to film entire concerts, which we'd never done before because we, we didn't need to and we didn't have time because we were so busy giving live concerts. And in the first week of lockdown, I was supposed to give a concert at Bridgewater Hall. So a few days before, we ran in, filmed the concert, and it was the first concert online in lockdown from a concert venue. Yeah. Yeah, it was. So, it was you know, yeah, it was amazing to be able to bring that to people. And yeah. we, we did some from here at home as well, but we carried on with venues when we could because we wanted to bring people music from amazing places, and it was a really great opportunity to do that. And uh, because we're both living together, we could go out there, yeah, everything household. safely, and do all that. So, Fantastic. and it's great that so many people have enjoyed it and still come and say how much they yeah. really love. We really doing appreciate that. that you watched them and enjoyed. Um, yeah, watching them. Yeah, fantastic. Um, um, I'm going to do another quick fire oh, round. Quick fire is, round. Is okay. Yeah, maybe I should do the quick fire round. Oh, you can ask. Oh, it's one of my top five album pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can do that. It's fine. So, Jonathan, here's the quick fire. Um, oh, 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 he, I need he, to see he, what he, I've written he, on my piece of paper. He's prepared these. Jonathan, what are your top five organ pieces? Okay, but this is from Archie Davis and Jack Chapman. Can um, you pick a top five? Anyway, it's impossible, really. But I wanted to. Um, I think one of the things I love doing is playing with orchestras and doing concertos. Uh, and I've, I've done things like Copeland Organ Symphony and Carl Jenkins wrote an organ concerto not that long ago, which I've played quite a few mm -hmm. times. But I think that category is one of my favourites. So the pieces I would choose are the John Gunn Symphony Concertante or possibly the Barber Toccata Festiva, which are both amazing pieces with orchestra and organ. I'd have to choose a Bach piece, probably something like the Passacaglia if I had to. Good piece. I might choose one of my transcriptions because I'm allowed to, and it would be Sanson Organ Symphony or Beethoven Fifth Symphony, Good and choice. then somebody else's transcription like Le Maire Tannhäuser Overture yes. because of the great thumbing down, yeah. and then something by a great organ composer. I used to always really enjoy playing Dürerflay. I learned everything by Dürerflay, and I used to really love playing the Suite in concert. Well, I think that's maybe I'll do that's that around again. five, isn't it? Yeah. And okay. what's the hardest piece? The hardest piece. Yeah. Well, I've actually set Jonathan a little challenge. Yeah. Um, which I hope that you're going to do. I've um, not played it yet, so I've I, never played the hardest piece. Well, I keep having these ideas. I'd like Jonathan to play Flight of the Bumblebee, but just with pedals. And I'd like it to be under one minute as well. I know. No I've, pressure. I've written it out, arranged it, and I've started practising it, so... That's the hardest piece at the moment. <laughs> um, Tom, do you have a wife? <laughs> Well, you already know that. No, I don't, I don't have Good, a wife. Good, I thought I hadn't spotted one. Do you have a girlfriend? Well, people are going to be shocked by this, but uh, no, I don't have a girlfriend. Um, so there you go. But we have, we have had girlfriends. We've both had girlfriends over the years who've come and gone, mainly, yeah. mainly, gone. mainly gone. But they've all been very lovely. Lovely. Apart from... Uh, apart from her. Apart yeah, she's a nightmare. Na absolute um, nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Yeah. Right. Apart from that, but no one's shocked. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Oh, this is, Sorry, this is this kind of complicated. How many pages of this are there? Um, oh, Archie Davis asked, what's your most memorable concert? And Joan asked, the most memorable concert of 2022. Most memorable concert of 2022 for me was um, going to Ripon Cathedral and performing like animation, uh, celebrating 1,350 years of Ripon Cathedral. So that was... Uh, that was great, yeah. I really love that concert. Thank you for everyone who, who, who came to that. And we had a great time, didn't we? And it was wonderful to see Ripon Cathedral full. Um, and was, I, I love that concert. It was fantastic. So what about yourself, Jonathan? I think my one of all time has to be the proms at the Royal Albert Hall in 2020. Um, it was during lockdown and I, they asked me to give an evening solo organ concert, which was broadcast on their internet I play a channel and also on the radio, but it was the experience of playing the Royal Albert Hall organ um, live at the Albert Hall 
but with only about five people in there. Tom was there. I was there. And the, and the camera crew and the producer. And that was it. You've got a space which will hold several thousand people with one of the biggest organs in this country and the world um, and to give a solo on concert. And the strange thing about it was... Um, I chose all my own transcriptions to do for a symphonic organ sound, but the fact that you're trying to get psyched up to do a live organ concert, but there's nobody there. I've played at the Albert Hall and it's actually been sold out as well. It's Mm. a great experience, but to do it, and it has to be live, I got there at midnight to set the organ, had four hours, went back to bed, went back again, did a sound test, and then live. Great experience. You'll never forget it because it was such an incredible one. Hopefully we'll go back when there's an audience and do it again. And you... um, Memorable experiences. You like to go to Taiwan. Oh, I did like to go to Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, we went to Taiwan uh, together, um, and that was the furthest I think we travelled at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we got there, and it oh, what a fantastic experience. And uh, I just loved the fact that they put this huge uh, banner up uh, with us on, and it was like, you know, <laughs> uh, 10, 12 feet high, and it was wonderful. They'd done the Manchester skyline. And we had a Some great... places a little flyer on the wall, and this was... <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, yeah, great concert hall, and we just had this wonderful experience of playing piano and organ, and I just thought, this is brilliant. I just thought, it, it just really kind of it kind of showed that you could just take this, uh, our combination of piano and organ and our arrangements and, and just kind of go around the world playing them, and it was just, you know, amazing. And, and we, uh, we, sat, what, we, we, had to, we did a signing afterwards, and they were queued right around the hall for about an hour. Was, it, yeah, was I, signed, it? I signed phone cases and everything. Was it, was, it was lovely to... And if you were at that concert, hello and uh, thank you for coming along. We've yes. been back a couple of times. Yeah, since, since then, yeah, this was a few, quite a few uh, years the, ago. And the last time we, we went, I we went to Kaohsiung to the new, um, the largest organ in Asia by Kleist. And in, that in, a, in the largest performing yeah, art centre uh, in the world, absolutely massive place. An incredible instrument. That is one of, uh, we sort of leads to the next question in a way of favourite organs because I think Kaohsiung, the Royal Albert Hall is right at the top. For me, yeah, as one of the organ. top ones. Also, Kaohsiung, 127 stops, two organs, three consoles, five manuals. It, I, incredible. You you really are tired at the end of it after reaching to reach for all the stops, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. And they sent me a 50-page book before I went of how to use the organ, of how to switch it on and use all the things on it. It was it was. Yeah. I had to do a yeah a whole degree in the instrument itself. But an experience of these are the places which you don't get into every day so it's a, an amazing thing to do yeah other other organs i suppose <laughs> sorry <laughs> swallow my own tongue there uh, other organs while i'm on the question of favorite organs and favorite organ stops uh, these favorite are from, stops. Oh, i know i've never <laughs> had that one before these are from juan elijah katie george adrian's chemistry laboratory and villain um so i've mentioned a couple I, I think we're very lucky in this part of the world in the north of england um that he's trying to look at my answers. Yeah, well, no, yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> We're looking at this answer. part of the world that in the 19th century some amazing organs were built because there's a lot of industry here. So there's churches like the Albion, which has a 1895 Lewis, Rochdale Town Hall mm, with an amazing organ. Bins organ, at Manchester Town Hall, which is going to have its cavalry call restored. So within this little area, we've got some amazing, yeah. some of my favourite instruments. It's been great. I was just, I mean, just where we are, it's been really good for music, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, just in general. And so. one of the favourites abroad that we went to was in Elche in Spain. Yes, a fantastic. I love that. It was up There's on a, on a, like a, a, a balcony, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. it was, yeah, it's quite scary. It was, it was a combination of the sound and the instrument, were absolutely incredible. And people have asked about, uh, who's asked this one? Elijah Katie's Sherlock's Exception and Adrian's Chemistry Laboratory. Organs you want to play and where have you not played? Have you not so, played? Well, there's quite a few of those, obviously. Again, it's really hard to answer because there's places we look forward to going all the time as, as venues and instruments. Yeah. And we go where we're invited because we have a website and people get in touch for concerts and yeah. series and festivals. And the ones I'm looking forward to this year are probably the instruments I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, Lichen Basilica in Poland, the biggest organ in Poland, six manuals. Five organs, or is it six organs? It's absolutely enormous. It's a lot of organs. In one of the biggest churches in the world. I'm looking forward to that. And San Sebastian Cathedral, we're playing piano and organ there. Yes. So that's one of the biggest organs in Spain. It looks yeah. incredible. And yeah. a beautiful part of the world. Yeah. You've been Fantastic. before. So, yeah, look at all those wonderful places. So, um, as I say, we'll put all the concerts that are coming up on our website, of course. So, do check in. It'd be great to see you wherever you are 
in the world and whether, wherever we turn up. Yes. Um, I'm sorry for boring organ questions. Go on, get the boring um, organ <laughs> questions out of the way, Jonathan. What is, okay, I'm going to give uh, technical ones. Preferred key action and what does tubular pneumatic action feel like? Or do we really need and to And are there this? bad organs? <laughs> okay, I, I, I like all types of organs because they all bring out different types of pieces. Tubular pneumatic should feel like a normal organ action if it's done well. If it's not, it feels like the organ's got something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to play them to learn what they feel like. Um, are there bad organs? Some are better than others sometimes, but most most injuries are pretty good actually. When I think I think wherever we go, we try to record the organ and and show that no matter how small, no matter how old, or whatever the organ is, but you can always get something nice and something special out of an organ. I think that's what you, Some you do a very good job of They're easier than others. Yeah. You've got, your job of the organ is to make each instrument sound its very best, especially for an audience who are there and you've come to watch yeah, a absolutely. concert. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you choose pieces according to the organ? That's from Mandy of Mary Mac. And how do you rehearse for an organ you've never played? That's from Erin and Mr. B. Mr. Now, B. I think the best example of this is... Um, yeah, how do you prepare for an organ which you, you, you don't know what's, what's going to happen when you get there? Sometimes you yes, get, you you get know, a book well, you on get an organ. Sometimes. These are books you get given on organs about the technicalities, how the stops work and everything like that. Amazing instruments. <laughs> you can learn everything. You'll know everything. It just is. takes up your hand luggage slightly. Sometimes we got invited to go to Latvia to the largest mechanical pipe organ in the world to do a concert. Yeah. Now, why is it the largest mechanical pipe organ? Now, people organ have asked about this because they see, say it's Sydney Opera House which is the largest mechanical keyboard action but the stops are electric on that. Uh, this one in Latvia the stops are mechanical the keyboard pedal and all the actions are mechanical and you can yeah, still yeah. pump it by hand. You can pump it by hand it's so it's no all mechanical. Entirely yeah. mechanical. However it's got a very complicated vental system. Yeah, they, they sent, sent me yeah. a photograph. They sent a photo of the um, console I've never seen anything like it. You know. It's all different colours. You probably show everybody so that. So Jonathan decided. I, so how do you work out what you do? What you do is you get a giant piece of paper and you write all the stops on so you know exactly where they are. So you can sit down and in your head work it out virtually. Uh, yeah, which leads us which back is, to... <laughs> why Jonathan doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh yeah, what's the top advice for organists? Well, my one is, it's a very simple one. When you go to rehearse at a place, make sure you've got a key for the organ and the key for where the toilet is. Oh, you know where the toilet is. Yeah, well, I know it. You only get locked in once without knowing that. Okay, quick fire round number four, Tom. There's more yeah. for you here. What sparks conflict between us, if any? That's from Alana. Um, no, nothing really. No. We, we, we get on with people each other, don't People we? always think that we'll argue or fight over things, but as brothers, you can... You can, oh, you can, we, we just say what we want to each other. You can say what you want, we don't take offence at each other. We don't take offence, we don't fall out. You know, Tom, that's it. Tom writes music, does Jonathan as well? That's from Jimmy Pell. Thank you. Um, yeah, I do write music and hopefully you've enjoyed um, some of my compositions. I'm going to write more. I, I've written a couple of things, but Tom, Tom does more. You have and you, you should write more. Thank you. I find you write it, very good compositions. I find it very time consuming to write things out, so I tend to transcribe, but... There are videos online of pieces I've done. Yeah. Do you undertake a regime of regular physical exercise and training? Well, um, need you ask? <laughs> I, you've noticed. No, actually, no. I don't do any uh, real kind of physical exercise. We don't do any kind of so uh, Christine... just just running around from from here to there and and running upstairs and you know general generally when we're out and about we do tend to kind of be active all the time. So I think just. Just generally keeping active is, is key. It's a it? long way around a concert hall or cathedral in a day. And yes. To find the place and walk around a whole city. And we have had the occasion where we did turn up at Brussels Airport once and for the flight and they'd overbooked the flight and decided to put us on an earlier one. And when we said, how long have we got? They said, have you heard of Usain Bolt? Yes. And, and we, uh, had, we had well, you have to run like him. And we had, right, we okay. had about 10 minutes to get to the gate at the other side. of the, We uh, made it. Absolute nightmare. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, you have to keep a bit of fitness going. But so, play, yeah. actually playing is, is quite good exercise. It uh, is. A, the question was from Christina, and it was all about yoga, mindfulness, and breathing. But if you do all that, they're just other words for what yeah. you do for technique, for playing. I, I think, think. In, in general, you need to, as a, as a performer, kind of stay relaxed and you've got to keep your mind kind of quite, quite relaxed as well in terms of, you know, I, th I think we're quite, I think we've, anyway, basically you have a performance mode and things like that, which we're, we're used to. Aren't we, we keep moving we? around and breathing yeah. in and out. We're quite relaxed. <laughs> and then when we get into playing in concert, we're, we're, we're in the zone, basically. Quite right. Yes. Um, that's what I like we never to see... tell myself. We never see Jonathan Page turn. Does he have an assistant or is everything on one page? That's from Johannes. 
Well, I think I mean so, I mean a lot of the time for our page turns, we we really do work out. Well, a lot of the time we memorize pages ahead, and we're actually not using the music. But sometimes we'll make it so that we don't have page turns in in performance. Basically, we just avoid it. And uh, there you go. Or some, I think sometimes maybe you might be looking at a pedal shop when you've got a page turn. I never use a page turn. It's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, d- I've yeah, had yeah, some yeah. Of, that comes <laughs> under worst ever concert experiences without a doubt. Yeah, I, mean, I did for the for a little while when I first started playing. I did, and so that comes under when I had a, a sheet sheets of paper separately on the music stand. I nodded my head, and they knocked the whole lot off. The whole piece went across the balcony, down the church, across the pedals, they, and then stood on the bottom note trying to pick them up. And this was only the first piece of the concert. Uh, and I had a page turner once who I went downstairs to introduce the piece, and they locked the door of the organ. Ah, so I said, handed. ladies and gentlemen, here is the first piece. Applause. Uh, and I had to knock on the door while the page turner <laughs> came down to let me in. So... No. Uh, yeah, okay. Not switching on the organ and things oh, like that. Oh, yeah, I did one concert where they were supposed to switch the organ on. I came out, played the first card, silence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was long before YouTube. You'll see, you'll see that Jonathan spends a lot of the time not using any assistant or help. Never, uh, and, no. and so he just uses... You don't need to because obviously the organ, it's got your thumb pos- uh, pistons on and things like that and, and all the aids and accessories yeah, no, so, no, it, yeah. it, it's, I think as a performer you should be independent I think so Yeah, you can't, if you walk out with a crowd of people doing a concert it, for yeah. me it's not what performance is as a, as a solo you're very independent yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're in control and there's only one person to blame fine <laughs> um, so yeah so I, I don't tend to I tend to have the music very small and I don't need to yeah he has extremely small music yeah. and I, and I, I, I can't it, read lot, that music uh, that you use it's too small a lot of it is in your memory as well so yes. you know you know what it says but a lot of the time on the organ you need to know where to press a button so you need to have a visual clue because you don't have a lot of time sometimes um, how long does it take to play the organ are there courses and do you have to master the piano First, that's from Follower Project Cyclo Octetetra. I can't even read that. Well, anyway, great, um, great username. Yes, um, and do you play at a church? Okay, th- these are all good questions. So, um, I put those. Basically, when I said playing the organ, I had to play for playing at a church, and I was only 10, 11 years old, and so I had to play for weddings and funerals. So, however long it's supposed to take to learn these pieces, I had to do them straight away. People were slightly alarmed when an 11 year old turned up to play for their wedding. Um, so I did have to teach myself the wedding march, bridal march. But you should play the piano. Uh, obviously, I started playing them at the same time. So you make your own decision on that one. But the general method is that, yeah, for the amount of organ playing you do, I, I think you should play the piano more yeah. because you get the finger technique. Because with your foot technique, you're walking around all the time anyway, so your feet are already used and mobile and supple and fine. Yeah. Your fingers, you don't walk around on those. It's, so that, you need to, it's that independence of the fingers yeah, and things like that. I if think you just play ele- piano. Yeah. If you just play electric action all Actually, the time, time yeah. you, will, you will lose that independence. And if you have a look, I mean, a lot of the great concert pianists also play the organ, mm-hmm. and a lot of the great organists also play the piano really yeah. well as well. So I think... Pe- it, pe- it, people yeah. like... Do du- both, People basically. like Dupre, Vienne, all the French yeah. organists, that it was for one hour of organ playing, you can do do three hours of piano playing. It was, yeah. a, it was a sort of a basic rule of thumb. So um, but make your own decisions on that one. Uh, and things, questions about sight reading, really, which leads on to the next one about transcriptions. So Marcus had asked about help with sight reading. And sight reading, the best thing you can do, actually, is if you go and play at a church and play hymns, because yeah, you can't that stop. Sight yeah, you yeah. can't stop. And you have to keep going the whole time. And then play with other people. Like I accompanied f- for years and years every single piece of violin, clarinet, flute repertoire. And it's amazing how quickly you will pick again, something Again, up. that's like playing without having to stop. Because I think that's the thing, really. Yeah. You just have to kind of keep going. And I think that helps you sight reading. And also just playing more and more challenging music. Trying to sight read kind of difficult things sometimes. And, you know, really kind of lots of ledger lines and things like that. Yeah, so as an organist, you always Make things more difficult and then the easy things seem easier. Yeah, so as as an organist, you always have to sort of score read and everything. And so when I was playing with orchestras all the time, the conductor would come up saying uh, you were doing mal the second symphony, you were playing the organ in that. They'd give you the full score and say, we need to rehearse the mezzo solo. 
put the full score, all 30 lines in front of you and go, right, three, four, and you'd have to try and score read the whole lot. And it's amazing how you manage to do that. With the, You sort of visualise the whole lot, see it, and it might not be sort of conscious, but you do take it in and you do improve. So always put yourself in a position where you don't have to stop and you'll be okay. Well, okay. It doesn't have to be that difficult. Well, no, <laughs> make it a bit easier though. Um, but for transcriptions, people ask about lots about transcriptions and how I do them, and I do read the full score. Get a full score, piece of manuscript paper, write it out onto two hands and uh, two feet. And that's a very basic way of doing it. We put the stops in and the manuals, which I notate as well. And I make some of them available on the website as yeah. well. Yeah, the scores are there, your transcriptions. And it's wonderful that people people play them. And uh, Yeah, so yeah, lots of people all used... over the world have, have played them all the time. Actually, so I hope you've yeah. enjoyed playing Jonathan's transcriptions. It's yes. lovely to share them with everybody. And it doesn't take that long. People say, does it take a long time to do? So uh, some I can spend a week on a little sharp piece sometimes if I'm perfecting it. The Beethoven Fifth Symphony I did, I can honestly say it took me three days to write it out and learn it before the concert. I know that because I was there. I witnessed this. You don't yes. forget things like that. Yeah. And you can, the video's online from Dusseldorf, so and, yeah, well, that's yeah, true. It went well. <laughs> um, where are we up to on this now? More questions. More questions. Where are we up to? Okay. Um, oh, and did I ever want to be a conductor? And I think that, that's that's quite a good question, actually. Well, but you're an organist. And because you're kind of you in control of everything, then you kind of like the organ is your orchestra, Jonathan. Yeah, so, yeah. a conductor is just trying to control a hundred people, and with an organ, you've got the same amount of volume and sound, and you can do it instantaneously. So your musical ideas go into that, and so you you do act like think like a conductor, really. So it's a yeah, good question. Yep. Um, oh yeah, the questions about yeah, do I say yeah? People have noticed that I always write manuscripts out by hand. It's, I'm of that generation who. When I was at the music college, I for the last generation who didn't use a computer for any exam or anything all the way through. Yeah, everything was done by pen, paper, and I'm more than happy. Was, yeah. Yeah. pencil and a piece of paper. I'm very happy, and so I don't use a tablet when I play either, because um, I'm always worried about that. I've seen concerts where people have got one percent battery just as they've gone on, in fear that it's going to run out any second. You never and know what might happen with a piece of paper. If I drop it off a balcony in a cathedral. I can go and pick it up afterwards, but not a tablet. Not a tablet, no. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. Um, how, and last question in this section. How do you organise your score library? Very simple. Yes. But I, Here's a picture. I show a picture of the score library. Is it's it in alphabetical order? It's alphabetical order, order, every single organ Makes piece sense. you could ever think of. Yes, I've got them all. He's very organised. Quick fire you are round. the librarian of Quick the fire round number five, oh, oh, Tom. Okay, let's go. There's lots of questions for you here. Let's go for it. Can you... Oh, a bit of advice on... This is from Caden Gonzalez and Carol Predeth. Hello. Um, Organ mic placement to make the instrument sound its best. Advice. Uh, advice. Um, well, basically, I, I actually just place the microphones where I can. Um, so basically, wander around wherever you are, church venue, where does it sound good to you? Put the microphone there. There you go. Basically, you Very know, uh, that is quite simple. And if you want an, another set of microphones uh, for a little bit of ambience, a bit of reverb, go and, go and uh, the same thing again. Go and wander. To the back of the, uh, the place. where the bits of the organ are yeah, and everything. It, it really does yeah. depend, really. So, some of the organs are quite difficult to mic up, and you might need an extra mic for kind of the, the tuba if it's around the corner. But, you know, apart from that. Uh, basically, just really enjoy ex experimenting uh, and just use your own ears, basically, because you, you're like a, a walking microphone. <laughs> quite right. <laughs> well, yeah, do I you, am. And do you prefer playing or filming? Um, well, I like doing both, but sometimes I play and film. You, you know, do? so I just run around, set up all the, uh, the cameras, and off we go and perform. But it's lovely. It's lovely to be able to do both and bring you every all those views. Oh, what's where, going on here? Where is your YouTube plaque? Right, my YouTube plaque it's is, is still in the box. Um, <laughs> I've not hung it on my bedroom wall. Um, so <laughs> we, will, we, we, we will hang it in here. We will do. Somewhere. We will do. It's, it's nice. It's floating around. It's, it's, nice. it's still, still there. there. It's pristine. It's very clean. It's got a mark on it. Wonderful. Why would there be? Tom, okay. do you play the organ as well? That's some Sarah. Uh, well, you know, um, I, I do. I play the organ. Well, I have played you the have organ. You have played the organ because when Jonathan used to play at Saint Cross, um, I used to have to cover some of the uh, services. Uh, quite a few actually. And so in the end, I did start to to learn the the organ and the foot pedals, etc. Do you know? I think. It, 
I think I... Well, I did a concert where on Christmas Eve I was playing for carol concerts at Bridgewater Hall. So very often I would start yeah. off on Christmas Eve and then you would turn and up I and came finish, and finish off. And finish off. But there you go, fantastic. And I, you've played in orchestras for me. Oh yeah, I've actually played uh, at Bridgewater Hall. I played the 1812 Overture, the, the, the organ part. Yeah. Very scary at the time. But uh, yeah, so but I don't really play the organ. I leave that. I leave that to you. But that's actually when we created the How to Play the Pipe Organ book. That's what I thought. I, it was something which I would have wanted to have as I was learning the organ. So that's yeah, no, think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, yes, I, I can play it. I can play all the manuals. Uh, you know, sorry, I don't know why I did that, but you know, I can um, play the and manuals. Miriam asks, how long does it take to edit videos? Um, well, it, it depends. Really, it depends. Um, like the last one we just did was was a was a live concert, so that was just yeah. Just so what, be, whatever be, you've got, you, you run through. Um, it basically, um, we I just line it all up afterwards and and and, and, and cut through and edit it. But we, we're very keen on, on creating productions, really nice productions for you to watch. Really, so. Um, I take my time and make sure that it's nice to watch. Basically. So yeah, we, we try and film them as live. The great thing about the videos is you can get rid of an ambulance going past. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, if, if there is a need to do that, if there's um, you know, as I say, a little bit of kind of editing for the production, then we'll do that. But but the album, mainly yeah, it's but... just we don't really have a lot of time, so we basically do have a lot of the, you know an hour in the venue, an hour two hours in the venue. So it's a setup, and you know a run through and then that's it so so it is what you what you get really but, what but, you see is what you get but the the christmas concert we did from the album was live with the audience but audiences provide the complication of where you put the mics and yeah. because you've got people in there as well yeah. who add more noise and sounds but it, it just it takes a few days you know of me solidly editing and and, and you yeah. kind of you have to render the whole thing down and make sure it's good so yeah it takes me a a good few days and but we, we do, do a little we, bit of production on it yeah. but it leads us on to the thing that we do create everything ourselves there's no there's no people ask who's in the team yeah. this is the team okay, so, <laughs> so we are the team we um we film everything we take all our own photos we do everything everything uh, recording everything, everything. Yeah. take it on ourselves in a bag indeed everything okay we'll, come, we'll come Literally, back to some two bags that. actually we'll come back to some of those uh pension asks do you teach organ students to me i I don't actually teach organ students. I've done master classes and things like that. But and and people have asked, would I do training videos or teaching videos? Um, but then we did a book of how to play the pipe organ because oh, I mentioned that earlier. Yes, yeah. Of course, so yeah, yeah. I was yeah. leading on to this because we thought it'd be great because people have the same questions. People who play the piano but have to play the organ, like I did when I first mm -hmm. learned. And you can't find information of the basic things. So we did that. And it's great working with master classes. I did one recently on transcriptions for at Derby Cathedral. Yeah. And it, I, th I was really interesting, I thought, to do that. I was and interested. I always enjoy it. And I think you can teach most people everything they need to know within about half an hour. But it's just the amount of time it takes to do all the practice and yeah. get the experience, really. And uh, maybe we'll do some more kind of tutorials online. hope so, yeah. yeah. We, we thought if about this. If there's something that you, you'd be interested in knowing about, yeah, leave, leave, a, a, leave yeah. a comment afterwards, yeah. And the final question, which may be unexpected, have you got a picture of Jonathan as a baby? Uh, yeah, I've got a picture. Well, there's, a, there's a lovely picture of when you were much younger, on a, on a horse there. That's random, <laughs> on a horse. So anyway, I, I, did, I did used to I, wear... I'll show a couple of pictures. I did used to wear an eye patch and glasses. You did? And as I got older, my, my eyesight improved, but I don't want the horse anymore. No. The horse riding days are behind him. So I hope that answers that question. I didn't expect that one. Why are you on a horse? <laughs> it's my horse? horse riding okay, career. It took a turn for the worst. Yes. Uh, okay, I've gone to a section about recordings now and things like that. Fantastic. Because uh, so Matt Bukowski and Joey Jim Bob on Twitter mm -hmm. had asked Hello. Had asked about um, whether we'd play some film soundtrack transcriptions and recordings and things like that. We don't yeah. do things like that because copyright is very, very difficult. Yeah, because you, you've got to get like special permission to it, do kind it, of it's things, a, it's if, especially if you're arranging them for scores and things like that. You have to, you know, get permission. But we have played lots of things like that, so you do have um, a badge to show for it. But we, we have played film stuff. We've done lots of concerts with film. Uh, when I was, um, oh, not that long ago, I was playing things like, you know, you play the Harry Potter theme tune, and I was actually on Blue Peter, which is a programme... Uh, children's program in uh, this country, very, very, and I got a Blue Peter badge. The so, so for those that have asked, have you got a Blue Peter badge? I do. There you go, <laughs> just there. I don't wear it. I've just had to dig that out. 
There you go. Um, but yeah, no, so all the recordings and things we do, we have played a lot of things that have been on film soundtracks. Yeah. So I did a piano solo elements of the soundtrack for a film of Brideshead Revisited. Yeah. And uh, we've had lots of our recordings have been on yeah, films. Yeah, they used on, on various TV programmes and things in, like that. In yeah. fact, there's um, it should be this year, there's a film on Netflix coming out which uses some of our recordings yeah. as well. And when we know the full details and the release, we'll let you yeah. know about that. Um, but lots of people have used them on film and TV and things like that. And people have used them for ballets and all sorts, weddings, funerals. People... And also uh, the in Budapest, the fountains, Jonathan, yeah. just most recently. Yeah, the fount- if you go to the fountains in Budapest, there's two recordings on there with the dancing fountains, the two of our recordings. Um, you have to go and see those. And uh, people asked, so Alexandra asked and Veronique about whether we do Spotify and CDs. So we only make our available our music on YouTube and on CD. And yep. the CDs are all on our website. They are. We've produced uh, quite a lot of CDs. Um, yeah, very good. And we, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, but no, we just like to... Um, kind of put our stuff out there on CD and, and you can watch all our videos in and, and listen to the music on, on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, quick fire round number six. Are you keeping up everybody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? Uh, I love painting, drawing, anything artistic uh, and I often do a lot of sketching when we're away as well. When we have a little bit of spare time and, animation, and, do I, and that all leads into my animation for classical music which I love to do and we use that in our concerts as well. That's from Laura and What Kath. about yourself, Jonathan? I, I don't have any spare. This is it. This is my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do in our spare time? We, an- we answer your questions. See, why don't you have a girlfriend? <laughs> well, again, once again. Um, freedom time. of the City of London, people are asked about. Why have I got the Freedom of the City of London? Yes, why and, do you have the Freedom of the City of London? And have I exercised my right to take sheep across London Bridge? The Freedom of the City of London. There's sheep. <laughs> yeah. you going on it's about? a small, yeah. Um, so, I got, okay, it's props. This is what you get when you get the freedom of the City of London. You get your indentures here saying you have, you're a freeman of the City of London. It looks very impressive, actually. Um, and this was because when I had finished being a student, um, there's the WT Best Scholarship and Gold Medal. And it's by invitation, and it's always the, the people from the Royal Colleges and the top organ scholars get invited, and you audition, um, and the winner gets... Um, to have the scholarship for a certain number of years, which is the modern equivalent of uh, an apprenticeship in the city of London. And so I won that. And as a result, when you finish your pull it out, <laughs> when you finish your apprenticeship, you get your freedom of the city of London in a very. It's a really nice ceremony at the Guildhall in London, and you receive this and a book of how to live your life. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And the, of course, that means that it's the old thing that you can go about your trade within the city walls of London unhindered. Uh, there's always jokes that you can take your sheep across London Bridge and play your lute or flutes on the steps of St Paul's Cathedral. Which I've maybe, maybe one day you could do. Yeah. See what happens. So that, that's what that is. It's an amazing thing. I think it's really nice, actually. So I'm very... very well. As um, I say, well I really done. like well that done. one. Okay. Um, what's your worst or scariest thing in performance? That's from Sherlock's Exception. Scariest, worst. Scare. Um, you never know what's going to happen in performance when organs and things. But I think one of the odd things is getting to the instruments. And we're going back later in the year to Evra Cathedral, mm-hmm. and getting to the organ there is quite scary because you go up a staircase. You almost have to get on your hands and knees on a passage. Very thin go passage. Go outside onto a yeah. ledge, which is very low on a balcony. Go back Unlock in. the door. Yeah, and in it, again. It, you wouldn't want to do it. And in the, the whole. Horror. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, but when we, when we go, I'll gonna, film. I'll film the route to the organ. We'll That's film quite it scary. Next time. Yeah. Um, do you play any other instruments? Inter- so, well, yeah. there you go. Now, was, Jonathan, you you have played other instruments. When we when we were beginning to play, Jonathan played. So I played uh, the trombone and the violin before trombone I went violin. to Cheatham's. You did. Absolutely. And Tom, you did. Well, I was actually a second study trumpet when I was at Cheatham's. Uh, and uh, there was a question, wasn't there? Um, who asked the question about playing the trumpet? The trumpet? Oh, that's later on. Somewhere. Later on? I've not got to that yet. Well, we're talking okay, about well, it. I'll find it in a bit, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, yes, I actually did play the trumpet, and I've actually dusted it off, and I can still uh, play it just about. I need to work on my uh, stamina at the moment. But we're thinking of uh, maybe doing some uh, piano. Yeah, they asked, somebody asked about so doing trumpet, trumpet and no, organ. I can't trumpet and it, organ, yeah. coming up. Uh, but... One thing I also like to do is play the. Oh, I'll get this. Sorry. Is play the uh, banjolele. So. 
Um, there you go. So I actually played the banjolele for a while, hence why I haven't got a girlfriend. Um, and, and there you go. And this is, a, this is a lovely one here, and it's actually signed by George Harrison, because I used to attend the George Formby Appreciation Society meetings, which, of which George Harrison was, for a time, a member. And so I met him, and he thought he signed my ukulele. Very beautiful, very lovely stuff. So experience. there you go. Excellent. So... Um, Saying that nice again, I don't, I don't do. Um, I, I need, maybe we should include this at some point. My, jo <laughs> my, my lovely George Formby impression. That might be enough for now. I'm sure people would like to see it. Anyway, <laughs> too I'll much, it too soon. I'll put it down there. Um, obviously, I play a keyboard instrument, so I do play harpsichord, and we play celeste, celeste, um, yeah, anything to key the block and spiel, everything like yeah. that. And the harmonium, of course, which people are often interested in. And the reason I play the harmonium is a very simple one. When I was a student, I got asked if um, the BBC rang up and said, do you play the harmonium? And I said, yes, because you need to have some jobs to do. <laughs> um, I didn't have a clue what to do with it, but I turned up to have a practice on it, realised you have to pump it with your feet, and it was a full recording session. They were doing the complete Percy Granger uh, works for orchestra. So there is a recording of me playing ha uh, harmonium from about 1999. Yeah. Um, that was my first experience. It's amazing how quickly you learn to do that. And I, I really loved it. So I've always learned it ever since yeah. and uh, done a lot more practice since so then. So just, just you know, my advice, just go for it. Throw yourself into amazing. the deep end and, 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 and it'll all work out fine. And then you can, you know, play the, the harmonium, basically. Which, which, which <laughs> reminds me of the other um, scary um, experience I've just remembered. Well, just where, tell everyone, please. The, when know. the first time I ever played at the Royal Albert Hall, so my first experience of playing with an orchestra was in 1999. And you go through music college and you never play with an orchestra at all. You, you play piano concertos, organ concertos with orchestras, but not in the orchestra. And so the, I, I got asked to go and play for the proms, was my first experience of playing for an orchestra at the VVC. And so I went and did this. And apart from the fact that playing the notes isn't that hard, but you're a long, long way away, you've got to follow a conductor, it's big, big forces involved. But the, at that time, the Albert Hall organ hadn't been rebuilt, and it was running out of wind, and they'd attach more and more blowers onto it. And when you did the concert, the organ tuner came and sat next to you because they'd sit there with a fire extinguisher because the organ blowers got so hot. There was a danger that if they caught fire, he'd have to go and put them out. And you couldn't leave it on for more than five minutes. So you had to switch it off after five minutes. But it took five minutes to come back on. And it was absolutely sort of so nerve-wracking, apart from doing the performance. Your timing right. Yeah, so that was quite okay. a scary one. I just remembered that one then, okay. Tom. Sounds uh, scary. Go on. Concerts. Concerts. Will you come to the US? Well, I well, well, absolutely. We would love to come and and visit you all in the US. You've got some amazing instruments, and actually, we did have a tour planned mm -hmm. uh, just before uh, just last all, year. The, all the restrictions came in and everything yeah. like that, and it just be, started to become very complicated with visas and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. We will start to uh, plan something again because we, we do get a lot of requests. There's lots uh, and lots of requests. And yeah. if you know if you um, do want us to come and see you in, in America, do do let us know and uh, you know. Yeah, do, get yeah. in touch because we book all our own concerts in ourselves and sort everything out ourselves. Yes, and so, we do. We, but the. Uh, it, with visas and the complications it's of applying for it, it's a, it's a complicated thing. But yeah, that was oh, Caden, Paula, Ryan, Ben, Gary Babarui, Matthew, Good and name. Drunk Blue Jay. Fantastic. I think yes. I'm, so we'd, we we'd yeah. love to we'd love to come and visit you all and perform for you in the US of A. Next one, are you coming to France? Uh, that was once with Toulouse. We, we did play in Toulouse at the festival. We did. We did play. Uh, you recorded that wonderful Saint Nicholas Bay, yeah, Saint Nicholas Church in Toulouse. Wonderful. Uh, and yeah. Paris. Um, we're going to Evra again, which is the closest one to Paris. Yeah. Uh, there's another organ in France as well. We're, we're going to. It's in the south near Marseille. We're going as well. Yeah, piano fantastic. organ. Yeah, okay. Well, well, I'm going to put these on the website very soon. Um, uh, will you come to South Korea? We're coming to South Korea. Yeah. To play at Lottie Concert Hall in Seoul in November, piano and organ. Yes. That's been postponed twice because of all the restrictions, but we will. Yes, we're going to see. We're looking forward to going to South Korea and seeing you on. Brilliant. And Germany. We're in Germany later in the year. Absolutely. But all we'll the concerts are on our website, and we will keep them updated. So keep looking because we put them yeah. on when they're yeah. confirmed. And yeah, the questions about coming to America, Wanamaker store, Boardwalk Hall. We've been in touch with lots of people so who have a lot of these places. amazing adventures yeah. still to have. And, and we can share them with you here on our YouTube channel. Okay, this is a good question. Are you ready for this one? How many British cathedrals have you played at? And there's a bonus if you can name them. Okay, so this is really for you, isn't it? I, I, had, to, I had to go. The answer is 19. 
I, I'm not a 19. cathedral organist, so I don't do the circuit of cathedral organs particularly. But over the years, I've played a lot of them, some several times. So, and I, can I name them? Okay. Well, you can. You've written, you've written them down. <laughs> oh, well, let's do it anyway. Newcastle Catholic Cathedral, Derby Cathedral, Clandaff Cathedral in Wales, Chester Cathedral, where if you come there this year on the 3rd of March, I'll be playing the complete Planet Suite live. So that's That'll be a special event, won't it? Yeah. St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh in Scotland, Manchester Cathedral, Salford Cathedral, Salisbury Cathedral, I did an evening organ concert there once, Litchfield Cathedral, and Litchfield Cathedral, Tom also played Prokofiev's first piano concerto. Actually, back in 1999. Yeah. Yes. For the Litchfield Festival. Yeah. Coventry Cathedral, I've done organ recitals there, Hereford Cathedral, we've been several times, Blackburn Cathedral, story down the road, Bradford Cathedral, um, St. Paul's Cathedral in London, done concerts there. Ripon Cathedral, many times. Special place. St. Albans Cathedral. Now, this is the, this is a story there, I can tell so you. So why were you at St. Albans Cathedral, Jonathan? Now, when I was a student, I, I was, I, when I was a student, I mainly played the piano more than the organ, probably, and didn't do that many organ concerts. And I thought it'd be a good idea to do an organ competition. Um, and so no one had ever really told me how to do a competition, so I took it upon myself to apply. And uh, what... What's the worst that can happen? Oh, indeed, you never know. So I, I sent, I recorded my audition tape, sends it off, got accepted, turned up. Everything's anonymous in this competition I'm doing. The first round I play, um, I get through the first round, get to the second round. I didn't think that would happen. Not learned anything else. <laughs> <laughs> second round, I quickly learned the pieces in Is about. Is this where your sight reading skills come in? About into two days, I learned the second round pieces. Got through the second round, down to the last three or four people. And then in the final round, I, I again, not learnt the pieces, and all the, so I did all that. Um, and I managed to get the uh, prize for the best performance of early music. Oh, and well, that, so, that, so that was my first experience of the St Albans Arm Competition in 1999. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but I'll tell you what, it was a great experience, and I did learn a huge amount. So preparation might not be always key, but it's nice to keep things fresh yeah, at the keep, same keep time. Keep it exciting. Just go for it. Back yeah. to cathedrals. Liverpool Catholic Cathedral? Yeah. And finally, Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, where, yes. yes, we have played at Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, and Ian asked, would we be doing something there, filming, recording? And the thing with it is, and we have been in touch with them, because yeah. lots of people did ask. And, and especially, um, you know, as when we had all the restrictions in, I thought it would be really great to bring you something from so there, because it's got but the it, largest organ. It's fantastic. It is the sole right of the cathedral organist to film and record there, so no, nobody else is allowed to film and record uh, officially yeah. there. So that's we did ask for you. We did, that, we that did was, ask for yeah, you, but we answer. respect that. That's the deal. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, no. But hopefully, there will be a live concert at some point in the pipeline. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Fantastic. Last few questions now, Tom. Okay. You're there. I hope you're We're still almost with there. <laughs> what okay. inspires you? What inspires that's me? That's some follower: Chris, Denise, David, and Alan. I mean, I should say you really, but I'm not going to. Well, uh, I think we, well, I, we. No, actually, we do actually keep the energy go in between us and we, we do inspire because we're always got a, an, an idea for a project or something that one of me, either you or me will come up with um, but I think it's just kind of discovering new music and then being able to share that music with everyone with, with, with all, all, everyone here watching now yeah for, for me it's live and beyond in live, in live concerts for me it's live concerts and yeah. playing for an audience mm. because the main reason for doing this is to share it with people there's no point sitting here on our own for ourselves. And there's people who might tell you that you should be interested in the pipe organ or how amazing they are. But the thing is to get up and do it and yeah. show people yes. and play in front of people. And we can't always do it live, so we do the videos. But we want to share people, see them actually being played, which might inspire people to actually go and play one as well yeah. or come to a concert. Absolutely. So that's my inspiration. And yeah, just well. sharing what we do. Yeah, um, Monica about our performance clothes, how do we maintain our remarkable picture of sartorial elegance? Well, I'm, I'm very glad you've, you've asked that, Monica. Um, basically, well, I, 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 you're amazing at ironing, Jonathan. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, wait, I, I always think it's a representation. It's respect for the audience and everybody watching, but also the fact that it's a representation. The first taste is with the eye. 
So it sounds better if it looks better. And also, if you've not bothered to clean your shoes and put on a nice suit, then you've probably not bothered to practice the notes either. <laughs> and so that's that's just my yeah. view. It's a bit, well, bit old-fashioned, maybe. Yeah, I, I think I think we have a slight old-fashioned view on on, yeah. on performance. It's, pre it's presentation. The whole presentation. We love yeah. stages to look clean. People often say, "Oh, the console's dusted." Yeah. And well, every time we everything every we do an online concert, I'm clearing everything away, and you know, I just like it just to look, you know, perfect. Perfect. perfect just so you know so the music yeah. should sound perfect and we try to look, look perfect our, yeah. our smartest that's for that's you. that's yes. why um yeah will, will there be some trumpet and organ coming up will there be some trumpet and organ if i can get my my trumpet stamina up we're, we're going to be okay jonathan and who's the best singer out of us two uh, i'm not even going to go any further with that I, I, you know when i when i was younger i actually could have gone and been a chorister yeah he was accepted yeah, and as I, a chorister. I actually used to play the lead chorister. the lead in a few musicals at school the lead. Sorry, I don't know why I'm going on about that. I don't do a, a huge amount of singing, but I've always loved singing, writing kind of songs and things like that. Maybe I'll do some more. Yeah, I think Fantastic. you should. You know, he's, he's, he is a very good singer, actually. I've, I'm, not, I'm absolutely terrible. I don't Thank see. you. Um, I think I'm that's, not going to comment. That's reached the end of roughly. I hope we've not missed out anybody's questions. We've tried we've to covered include quite a few there. Everything. Yes. I hope that makes sense, and you've learnt something. And yeah, I mean, we just want to say thank you. For, for your questions, I um, hope you found that interesting. And it's just absolutely fantastic just to be able to connect with you um, in this way. And obviously, you know, this is here on, on, the, on, on the YouTube channel. You know, it's just fantastic. You don't need to join, you don't have to do any, anything like that. It's just, it's just all, all, everyone is welcome yeah, just to come and watch and enjoy what we do. Um, we just thank you so much for all your wonderful comments. It really does help. So, you know, um, we, we read all your comments and it's lovely to, to read them. And thank you for all your subscriptions, and, you know, just, you know, for everything really. And it's just really nice for for people to kind of uh, share their enthusiasm with us as well. So yeah. it's, not, it's not an exclusive club. Anyone can come and watch any of our videos for free and uh, we hope you enjoy them. So please, yeah. uh, if you've got any more questions, we might do this again if there's something we've missed. So do comment, yeah. give it a like. And uh, hopefully watch it again if it didn't make sense yeah, the first time round. <laughs> anything else that you'd like to see on the channel, anything like that, just yeah, leave a comment and uh, be fantastic we'll look to forward to bringing you more videos this year. So that was, let's just uh, wrap this up, that was, uh, we answer your questions, or you ask us your questions. I think it's ask us your questions. So that's, we have ans answered your questions, but that was, ask, ask us, us your, your questions. questions.